Where did we stop a few seconds ago? That's right, we talked about how to hide the unnecessary fields. The opposite feature of hiding fields is displaying the fields. We can reach this feature by right clicking on one of the column's header and then choosing the option Show. In the pop up window, we can see five different tabs, but now let's focus on the first tab Displayed columns. Here the window is divided into two parts, the list of columns that are being displayed and the rest of the columns that are currently not being displayed. On this screen we can hide the columns by transferring them to the right hand side to the unused fields using this arrow button between the lists. We can also display hidden fields by selecting them and then pushing the last for the row button. With this, we transfer them to the fields that are being displayed. Within the same screen, we can also manage the order of the displayed fields using those buttons up there. Note that we can also achieve this feature by drag and dropping the columns in the list. Oops, I closed that window. But don't worry about that. We can reach the complex layout settings screen also from the toolbar by choosing the option Change Layout. Besides displaying and hiding columns, here we can also set total rows for the key figure fields by marking these checkboxes on their right side. Let's display the total quantity as well. If you are observing the features offered by this pop up window, you will notice that this window enables us to reach the same functionalities that we can reach using the toolbar at the top of the AIV list and even more. These are the complex version of the settings that we played with previously. Let's move to the next step, the sort order, where we can create more complex sorts than using those buttons up there. Right now the list is sorted by the document ID. What if we want a list that is also sorted by the material? No problem, just highlight the field and then let's move it to the left side. We can also set the proper order of the sort fields using these buttons up there. So now the list is sorted by the document ID and within that by the material. The next step is about managing the filters. First we need to choose the fields that we want to use for filtering the list. Let's choose the document date. And then we need to determine its value by pushing that filter button down there. In the pop-up window we can choose a single value, a value range or even something more complex. Now I am simply choosing a date using its value hub. If you are ready we can press enter. As you can see, now the list displays only the purchasing documents that was created on the selected date. On the View tab, we can switch between the different views like the SAP List Viewer, Microsoft Excel or even Krista Reports. Now I'm leaving this as it was by default. Now let's check the last tab, Display, that contains a few display settings. For example, we can decrease the size of the heading. We can turn off the horizontal and vertical grid lines. We can hide the column headings. We can ask the system to not to merge the fields with the same content during sorts. We can ask the system to optimize the column width when displaying the list. We can switch to strip pattern. We can also display the total lines not only below the entries but above the entries. Finally, we can ask the system to print this list including with the exact date, with the title 
and also displaying the page numbers. Alright, the last feature that I want to show you is the layouts. If we navigate back to the selection screen and then execute the report, we can see that the system forget about the layout settings that we set previously, the sorts, the filters, the total or the subtotal rows and so on. But it doesn't to be that way. The AIE reports usually provide a very useful feature. We can save and then reuse these save layouts. Let me show you how it works. First, let me perform the same settings again that we did previously. To save a layout for further reuse, we need to push the button Save Layout. Currently, we don't have any saved layout. To save a layout, first we need to enter a technical name, let's say weekly report. Then let's give a description also. Then we can decide about that we want to share this layout somewhere else or not. And we can set this layout as a default layout. So whenever we execute this report, this layout will be loaded by default. At last, let's save this layout by pushing the check mark button down there. Now if we navigate back to the selection screen and then execute the report again, then the system loads our saved layout by default and with this boosting up our daily work. Alright, that's it. Until now we learned a lot about the SAP GUI again. We have seen a lot of screens and transactions. You may be a little confused. So let me summarize what we have learned in this module. 